Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Papa's Workshop. Season for Adam, Brady, Luke, and Brenna. But before we get started, we got to check in with my assistant who is diligently guarding the workshop. Now, some may think that she's asleep, but oh, you're not, are you? <laughs> it's no treat. No treat. You just had one. You ready to get to work, girl? All right. All right, so this episode is part four of the Newport, uh, Newport card table. Um, we finished the back legs last time, and so we're going to finish the joinery on the apron area before we start shaping the front legs. So let's uh, take a look at that. All right, uh, I've got the table dry fit together. It's upside down, obviously. These are the legs the front legs. Um, and when I did the research for the table, there was, uh, in the write-ups, especially John Townsend used a method of, of two, two braces on the bottom, right? it's upside down, and then three braces on the, on the top side, and they were dovetailed to the case. But those were not on all the, and the pictures showed that, some of them the pictures had just one in the center on the bottom, but the pictures were all of the of of the block front card tables, which is, it just has raised raised and lowered sections that were still flat, and the center section was even though it went down, the center section was the same height as the as the apron front to back. Uh, but with this serpentine front and in this area here is lower than the than the back apron the only I mean it's it's down by this much which is uh like I think five eighths three quarters down um so that isn't gonna isn't gonna fit there so since without being able to see how they did the originals i'll i'll put the three on the uh top side but it seems like there ought to be something, at least one in the middle to uh, keep, since the hinge is mounted on this back apron, uh, to keep it from twisting when you're moving the legs. It seems like there ought to be something. Um, so two options, or three options. Don't put anything is one option. And there were some tables that didn't have anything on this bottom edge, so that that's one option. The second option would be to go ahead and dovetail it to the front and then put a, uh, a tendon, maybe a through tendon, uh, into this back piece. <clears throat> then that would have to be assembled when that's, when the dovetailed ends are glued, you'd have to do this at the same time. Uh, and then the third option would be, since it's only down by that worst case three quarters is I could dovetail it and make the dovetail deep enough that it's square. So there'd be three quarters of the dovetail sticking out. Um, so that may work. Uh, I, can, I guess you could fill it with a plug. Or, or, I don't know. So I think it's option two or three, I think would be the thing to do. Uh, I think we'll work on the, the, uh, the dovetails for the, the top braces. We'll do that first and, and uh, ponder the possibilities for this other. All right, I cut out the, uh, the dovetails on just on one end of all of our braces. And I just cut it on the bandsaw and then trimmed with a chisel to the lines. And so now we're ready to, uh, we're going to do it on the front. Uh, so this is the bottom of the front, no, the top of the front, sorry. These are going to be the three that go across on the top. And then we'll have holes in here, slotted holes to screw the top down. Um, so... I'm doing this just on one side so that we don't have to be perfect. We'll, we'll get these all positioned, then we'll transfer the position laterally to the back, and then we can determine how much of, of a dovetail goes on that end. 
I mean, it's approximately what this is, but not exactly. So we'll have to, when this is all, all these are in, we'll figure out what that exact has to be. <clears throat> so to be sure that I'm 90, I've got this little uh, bracket here and I've centered, centered this one. I've got marks for the others who do the same thing. So it's just a matter of this way, getting it right. And then we'll take the marking gauge and we'll, we'll just chop out that uh, dovetail, the, the, uh, the, the pin part of the dovetail. Okay, I've got the three uh, front top dovetails or the pins done. But so I marked, when I had the, uh, the board fitted in there, I marked this little knife mark right there. And so now I transfer that to the top or to the, the back edge and do the same here, ignoring the pencil mark. The knife is much more precise than the, so now I'll be able to take the knife when this is out and scribe a line just by putting it in that notch and, and going for it. And that way I'll get uh, front to back, get them lined up. So uh, next I need to do the two uh, smaller braces that are gonna be on the bottom, do the same thing. All right, I got the bottom dovetails done and I had to take a different approach to get the transfer of that to the back. Uh, so I lined up the edge here and just have a little spacer. So I got a little gap in there and just took the knife and uh, mark the mark the edges of the boards. Um, so now I can, uh, I, I know how to position them on the back. So now we need to put back together and uh, figure out how much dovetail goes on these other ends. All right, we got all the internal braces done. Two on the bottom, three on the top, uh, and they're all fit. And so here's how I did the back. Back being taller, we just got the just that little bit there. So what we do next is we're going to disassemble. This is dry fit. We got to put some holes in these top ones to uh, be able to screw the top in there. So we'll have holes in the front and slots toward the back so that the uh, top can move toward the back. So we'll have like a hole there and a slot probably in the middle and a slot in the back. And that way we can secure the top, but we'll let it expand out toward the back. And then we're ready to start on the, the front ball and claw legs. So that will be next. And while well, we got it all apart, we'll get all the machine marks off of these things and uh, break the corners a little bit. And so be ready to uh, glue up when I get the legs done. All right, we're ready to start on the front legs. So I've got the, the pattern marked on two sides. So we'll cut that out on the bandsaw, but I'm gonna leave the top section uh, intact for now so that it, it gives me more beef on that end to, to clamp this in the vise to carve the ball and claw. And I've got the uh, knee blocks uh, defined. We want, <coughs> we've got the, the end grain, it's mostly going from corner to corner. It's kind of curved. We're gonna make sure that the, uh, the blocks do the same thing. So here's the left front. So see that block? I don't know if you can see that. That block's got the same, the grain going in the same direction so that when it's, it's cut and curved, <coughs> it'll look the same. I mean, that's the, uh, that's what we're after. So these blocks were cut off of these same blanks and I got them all roughed out to square shape, so they're ready to be cut on the bandsaw. Uh, and we'll glue those on uh, before we start shaping this top. Um, so, to the bandsaw. 
All right, we got uh, got one leg cut out totally, and we got all of the knee blocks cut out. Um, and I just got the one profile done, so now I need to tape this on so I can get cut the second pattern. And I just use blue tape, just get it on there uh, close and. Put some tape on there, and we'll be good to go for the second cut. All right, we got them all cut out. Um, before we start on the ball and claw, we're going to um, I'm going to smooth this out uh, from about here to up to the block with the spoke shaves to get that uh, pretty well even. So then we know what we're dealing with when we. You know, this is my arrangement for holding this at a, at a comfortable height. Um, this uh, the vise and the parallel clamp works really well, uh, but on a long leg like this, it gets kind of floppy out here. So I've got just uh, some wooden clamps to support it out here. So it's pretty rigid. So I can really push hard on the spoke shaves, and then when I, we get down to carving, um, you know, you got to have some way to hold it. And if it's too low, it's it's real. Uh, tough on my back anyway. So let's get to uh, shaving. All right, we got them all, all uh, smoothed out, all four sides. And um, you you can feel a bump, smaller bumps than you can actually see it, the bumps. So as long as everything feels pretty good, uh, we're good. I, I set them on uh, the table saw bed, it's flat, and eyeballed the, the two legs side to, you know, to make sure that they were more or less the same and they're pretty close, so we're good there. So then I took our uh, knees while we're here and line that up with over here and then marked with a pencil where that curve's got to be cut on all four of these things. Um, so before I cut them, I went ahead and shaped, shaped this. I drum sander did this part, took a plane. Actually, I got to do a little bit more on that one. Got that flat and then uh, just rounded that with a plane and then finally a gouge, carving gouge, get that straight. This part will have to be carved when it's glued on to finish that circle or that arc right there. So, but I wanna get, while I still have my lines here, cause that'll be cut off once I do that, I can uh, get that all straight. So the problem is then that you can't really do that on the jigsaw, or I mean on the bandsaw, because as soon as you get here, it'd throw, try to throw it down. So I made a little, uh, I took the scrap that was cut off the top of this right there, and taped that onto a, a piece. So that'll, that'll hold it, that'll support that while I, I cut those pieces. So I'm going to do that. And uh, then we'll be ready to start on the ball and claw. So this is a good, a good point to stop this episode. And next, uh, next one we'll do the whole episode just on carving these uh, ball and claw feet. So enjoy the new year. This is, uh, for me, this is Saturday the 30th. So uh, this will probably be published uh, just uh, this weekend sometime. And uh, we're ready for 2024. Woohoo!